come out here to get bait and it actually looks like there's fish feeding in the top water here at a real dense school of fish here. So we might actually be worth throwing a livey back out and um, yeah, seeing if we can't, can't raise a bite out here. Yakas, that's not what we're looking for. Um, Yakas are still, like, they're still good baits. I would use these if we didn't get slimies this morning. Um, but yeah, we catch like dollies on them and catch kingies on them. Um, they're a little more hardy, like they last in the bait well a fair bit better. But um, yeah, this morning we're definitely chasing some, uh, some slimies. So we're gonna have a bit of a look around, see if we can find a good stack of them. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, fully. It's my bait rod. It's my fishing charter rod. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a good one. I reckon we can turn this guy into a Spanish mackerel today. So we just send down these little bait jigs. They got these like luminescent beads on them, and that's what we catch the bait fish on. So we've got our slimies. <laughs> ah! We keep drifting over it so quick. I'm just gonna go back up on it. All right, so we go one foot, one hook. Through the nose. Oh yeah, he's nice and active this one. And then we got the treble, the stinger, just to the back here. You don't want it too tight just so the fish can swim nice and freely. Oh yeah. It's feisty. What we want. Come on. Out you go. these buddies but there's a little one but happy days for the start. Lost a while. Snippy boys. Yeah bro. <laughs> yes. Look at that one. Very good. Another one of the rays gang. Woo. So we got two from four which is pretty much the strike rate with um, what we've had with these fish. You get about half of them in the boat. So having a good day. <laughs> so yeah, double hook up first. Jay was on the camera, so we didn't quite get to the second one. Um, um, yeah, they're not as thick as, as they have been. And then we got another hook up on this rod, got that one in. And then as soon as I was feeding one out, then we got another hook up. But um, their teeth are so sharp, it's just cut through the, um, through the wire, unfortunately. So. Yeah, we're going to make another pass here and then we might have a look around see if we can't try and find a um, Spanish because the species we got now are spotty, so they're a little bit smaller. Still awesome eating. So, um, yeah, we think we'll just switch it up and we're going to head back up north and just troll some lures. Basically, because we're on the way home, we may as well be fishing. So we're going to put out this, um, we're going to put out this skirt. Um, hopefully get a wahoo. It's got a nice amount of wire on it. Um, yeah, I've hooked up a wahoo, haven't caught one, so I'm pretty frothing to try and catch one. So yeah, we'll give it a crack, see how we go. Huh? 
Oh, good dish out front of home. Oh, where do we go, Spano? Yes. Yes. All right, we're going to need the gas. You ready? His teeth are in that wire. You ready? Got him. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, good job. Oh. Yeah, bro. What a Spanos are in trouble. The boys are on! Yes. It's going to pull through his flesh, so I'm just worried about his teeth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we're we're going to have one more run over the top of that, eh? What? Frothing? Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Spano's at home. It does not get better than that. I actually thought yesterday when I was in the water, I was like, man, my dream would be to get a Spanish out the front of, of my house, which is not where we currently are. Secret spot. <laughs> no, it's honestly seriously amazing, eh? It makes it just that much better. That is fucking sick. Yeah, bruh. Woo -hoo -hoo. The boys got it done. Oh, man. Oh. Yes. So, <laughs> oh, mate, I'm frothing. That is just... Oh, look at the colour. Let me get some colour. And, and the expectation on the way home was just so low, eh? It was that sick. Oh. I really need Yeah, let's get stuck in and start filleting this guy. So all along the way back by in there, beautiful. And then you just knock this little back pectoral fin off. It just makes it easier to get that skin off. Chuck him on the fire. And then we're gonna come in under this fin here and angle back towards the head just to maximize the amount of meat that we can get off that collar. So back in through here back up towards the head there. Pull it off, so I'm just gonna flip him around. And then I like to come in here, some guys just go straight into it, but I like to come in the back here, just under this fin, and it just allows you to maximize the amount of flesh you get off that side before you knock the fillet off. So again, long flowing strokes, so make sure you got a really sharp knife and just pierce the skin and run it along. So then now that we've made the cut along the bottom here, along the top, and we've freed it up from there, we can now knock the fillet off. So because we've made that little cut at the end there, we can just come straight in, find that spine, come along the spine, and then we should be able to just free that fillet up now. Beautiful. So, say hi puppy. <laughs> Um, that is the bloodline. So this is the top line, and we're going to take that off. That's kind of like the premium part, and we want to get this spine out of the middle. And it makes it a little bit easier to get the skin off um, once you've taken that off. Let's take this skin Dad, off. Dad, they're fine. Are they? That's going to be so yummy. So now we can just take our knife in the end here, and we can just run down against the skin, just again trying to maximise how much of that fish we save. Chuck that to them. There you go. <laughs> Sweet, so I'm just gonna stake it up. This is like how I like to freeze it. And then you can use it for sashimi or just like a steak of mackerel. Or the kids like to have it like cut up into, um, you know, like little fish finger type size. So yeah, it just gives you heaps of option once you've sort of stored it like that. Especially if you're giving it to crew, that's kind of the nicest way to give it to people. So basically what we're making are sushi cones. So it's like, rather than rolling the sushi up, we're gonna fold them into little cone shapes. A bit of it. So you can kind of cut this however you like. You can obviously do like little slices, um, you know, like you would sashimi, but I think it's nice to have a little bit of texture against the rice with the raw fish. So we're gonna move on. We're gonna whack a little bit of palm sugar in here for sweetness. Um, just makes a really nice, like, 
addition with the rice and balances everything out. So we're gonna kick off with that. So we just want about like a teaspoon of, of it and you just grate it onto something like a microplane, it's perfect. As long as you don't grate your fingers off. <laughs> Next up, we're going to hit it with a little bit of lime zest. So, same again, just over the microplane. We're just going to hit it with a little bit of tamari. Can you give me a little bit of that fish with some We'll just hit it with a little bit of um, garlic now. All right. A little sprinkle of rice wine vinegar on there. Tiny bit of olive oil. And I'm going to give all this a really good mix up. So, proper outdoor cooking. I forgot to bring a spoon or anything to mix this with. <laughs> right, so we're gonna knock this avo in half and we just wanna get some slices out of there. All right, I wanna chop up this little bit of spring onion. So we're gonna kind of lose the white part for this. We don't really need it um, for this one. And then we just wanna get that really nice green part, really, really thin. So we'll just knock the ends off the cucumber. We're gonna knock it in half to about the size of our sushi and lose those ends. Cut them in half. And then we're just gonna cut some ribbons of this guy. All right, cool. So we've got a square sheet of nori here and then we've got all of our ingredients ready to go. So you can obviously use like any white fish or any sort of sashimi quality fish for this. So just cut that guy in half and then grab some rice and we just cook this rice um, it's just so perfect for camping because you can park cook your rice and it lasts a couple of days. You want to squish it into the top half square. You don't want too much because you want to leave enough room for all your other fillings in there. So just pat that down. All right, next up, we're going to layer up um, with all the ingredients. So start off with a bit of cucumber and then a little bit of that spring onion. Pickled ginger. That for me is the real like hero on this because it kind of balances out with the fish and adds a bit of zing. Bit of avocado. All right, bit of cupy. And then we can put some of that beautiful fish in there. So you can just dot your finger on the soy and that'll be just what helps seal him up. And then you just kind of want to bring it point to point. And then you can wrap your sushi cone around the back. Yeah, there you have it, so a beautiful little sushi cone. It's a perfect like one-handed way to have it. And Looks bloody delicious. Far out, that's tasty, eh? Thanks, Nick. Yeah, that's all you get.